What's up everybody? Welcome to Balkan Moto. Today I got the uh, adjustable fork caps and we're going to put them on the bike and set up the static sag uh, with these things instead of air pressure. So let's check it out. So I jacked the bike up and I took off the old caps and these are the new ones. So first thing to notice here is that the new ones are significantly longer even at their minimum setting. So uh, one thing we can do is measure the old ones just so we have a understanding of how much difference we are getting. So these ones are measuring in at 18, 18.35 millimeters where these ones at their minimum setting they are yeah. come on they are Twenty-seven and a half. So eighteen point three versus twenty-seven and a half. So that's uh, significantly bigger. So that's almost uh, what, eighteen. So roughly eighteen and a half to seventeen and a half. That's nine millimeters longer. So I suspect that these would be far too long to try to install and adjust properly with the four. Um, inch uh, spacers uh, but we're gonna do it anyways just to kind of uh, make sure that that is the case and then uh, if those prove to be um, not so adjustable uh, because with this much at the minimum like the the, the extra uh, what is that extra I think I believe it was 16 millimeters so 16 and a half of adjustment that's only going to add more uh, preload to the springs um, which will reduce the sag so if we see sag that's already too short with the minimum setting um, there's no point to do the four inch uh, spacers we're just going to switch over to the um, three inch five eights uh, or 92 point uh, what is that zero six zero seven five mm. Yeah, 92.075 uh, millimeters and uh, hopefully get a lot more adjustability with that. So let's put these on the uh, four inch uh, spacers and see what kind of sag we get with that. All right, so after installing the adjustable caps with the already in there uh, four inch spacers, some interesting discoveries. Um, turns out that the air pressure in the forks actually contributed quite a bit. So with the minimum setting of 27.5 millimeter adjustment, I was actually getting closer to the top range of the suggested street bike uh, settings. So 32.21% of static sag, which was kind of shocking because I was expecting it to be almost uh, closer to the bottom end um, of the range. So then as I adjusted it, I tried uh, three more iterations, um, 31 millimeters, 34.5 millimeters, and 38 millimeters. You guys can see the um, <coughs> uh, results on the uh, right side. So technically I could run with the four inch spacers. Um, the one thing that I don't quite like is how uh, these adjustable knobs kind of stick out. I find that quite dangerous in the case of um, uh, <clears throat> having to fly forward or nail my head onto this. Like I feel like I'm going to get impaled on these things. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the uh, smaller spacer to allow for these things to be further in to get the same results. Um, the 3.3-inch uh, 5.8 spacer is actually right about 9 millimeters, so right about this amount here that you see. Um, 
So that's uh, that's six millimeters, but uh, roughly that. So that would mean that even at full adjustment, I would be right at the bottom of the um, uh, suggested uh, range for street bikes. Um, so that will allow me to at least have a little bit more flush uh, set up here, um, but also allow me to uh, pull it back out to increase the uh, sag should I need to for a little bit more plush ride. So essentially allowing me to have a more full range of adjustment on uh, these things um, where the usual position I'll keep them in is probably almost all the way in. And that would allow for um, a little bit more safer, uh, I guess, riding. And uh, yeah, so let's put that in measure those out uh, and see if my theory about using the shorter spacer actually works and uh, have a nicer setup. All right, and after doing all the measurements with the um, three inch five eighths spacer, this is kind of like the final setup that I went with, which is pretty much adjusted to all the way in. Um, and what this results in is right around 28.99 or 29 percent uh, static sag, which is perfect. Um, now that also means that I can't reduce the static sag by adjusting these even further. So they're kind of currently set up um, to the stiffest setting. Now the reason I've done that is because these are not linear uh, normal springs, there are progressive springs. So Tightening or adding more preload on them will just take away the very soft portion of them and uh, the more tightly coiled part will um, feel way too stiff. Um, now that being said, the adjustment that I could do is essentially making them softer, allowing for more static sag. Um, and you can see uh, on the left the iterations that I tried, but essentially at the least amount of uh, adjustment at the top, so at 27.5, uh, millimeters, I'm getting closer to 40% static sag. So that's significantly softer, obviously. Um, but either way, I think this will give me a nice um, uh, setup for riding around town. Uh, and also for safety reasons, I don't have caps for these. So these things don't stick out like a lot. So I can't really get super impaled onto them. <laughs> um, and yeah, now all that's left is to test ride the bike and see how it goes. That was it for this episode. The bike feels pretty awesome uh, with the current setup. Uh, the progressive suspension with the proper spacer and the proper adjustment on the static sag actually results in a very, very leveled ride. Um, not much uh, diving or expansion of the front suspension under hard acceleration or hard braking. Going over bumps is nice and uh, plush. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with the result. Um, make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available. Check out DocAndMoto.com uh, as well as uh, uh, in my Instagram account at DocAndMoto2018. Um, in the next episodes coming up, we're going to be doing the front brake lever uh, and the front brake lines to clean this whole mess up a little bit. Um, and then uh, after that, I believe we're doing new horns and finishing up with the front end by mounting the headlight back on and so on and so forth. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.